What's up everyone, it's Jake here and welcome back to Almost Vintage Style and we are today going to be talking about probably my favorite subject to talk about in terms of clothing and that is leather jackets and specifically Japanese leather jackets. Although, and although you could probably tell us from the title, it's not necessarily what you would normally think about in terms of a subject for me. Uh, because today we are going to try to answer the question, are Japanese leather jackets currently overrated? Uh, so we're going to look at three main categories uh, here. So one is the construction quality, two is the material quality, and three is sort of like the design and patterns and all that sort of thing. Okay. Now, the first, the reason why we're talking about this is because there is a lot, a lot of hype around Japanese jackets right now, um, from other people on like Instagram, some forums, some stores, sellers, uh, YouTubers, people like that, really hyping up Japanese leather jackets. I mean, I, I'm part of this. That's partly why I'm doing this. Is you know, I kind of have to look in the mirror with this one. Um, because I really like Japanese leather jackets. I mean, I even did a video with Nick at Stridewise about the top five, I think, best Japanese leather jacket brands. Um, so you can check that out if you want to. Also, my jeans pocket is all messed up. I just realized that as I tried to put my hand in my pocket all cool or whatever, and it didn't really work out. So anyway, um, but yeah, so I still think Japanese products are really well made uh, and I've written articles and done videos in the past on why I think Japan makes great clothing, especially amakaji, heritage, work-weary, vintage-y kind of mid-century, early mid-century Americana clothing, right? Um, but there's so much hype around it right now that I'm starting to question that. I've had some experiences recently with other leather jackets that are causing me to rethink this a little bit. Um, and also just noticing that people are, there's a lot of misinformation, honestly, and people are misinformed about a lot of things. So I want to correct that as much as I feel like I possibly can. All right. So first thing to talk about before we even get into these three categories is Japanese leather jackets. People, the biggest mistake people make, and this is, if you take one thing away from this video, take away this, Japanese leather jackets are not all equal. That's just not true. And that is probably the biggest misconception that I'm seeing right now is that people see these really great Japanese leather jackets and people on forums and, and on Instagram and all these places talking about how great their Japanese leather jackets are. And so they see a different Japanese leather jacket and they're like, oh, cool, I'm going to buy that and it's going to be great and I'm going to love it and it's going to be the best. That's not necessarily true. Okay. Because one per it's like made in USA that it's not all equal. Right? I mean, we have talked about this with boots and clothing and all that stuff. A pair of jeans made by Roy Slaper in the USA are not the same thing as the near the tail end LVC made in America jeans. Okay, there's different levels there. All right. Um, I, I, right now, even made in China, there's clearly differences in quality. A lot of people, there's some stuff that's terrible made in China, but there's a lot of really great boots that are coming out of China. It's not all equal. And even the different boots coming out of China, they're not all equal. So that's the biggest thing is people think a Japanese leather jacket is just a Japanese leather jacket. That's not true. Um, there's different levels. Now, obviously my favorite and the one that I do genuinely believe is the best based on my years of experience and trying on many different Japanese leather jackets in different stores, owning a bunch, going to Japan twice and trying on leather jackets a lot both times and handling a ton. Freewheelers is the best, um, at least in Japan. Uh, if we start talking about the rest of the world, you got other jackets that compete, and we'll talk about that later. But for me, easily, Freewheelers is the best for Japanese leather jackets. Um, the only two that come close, in my opinion, are the Real McCoys and uh, Rainbow Country. The Real McCoys and Rainbow Country. Uh, the Real McCoys, I've owned four of their jackets at least, handled a bunch more, tried on a bunch more, and... The Freewheelers jackets I've had all have better stitching, better construction quality overall than the Romacoy's jackets. Uh, I think the materials are better as well. Uh, I think just the attention to detail is higher. Actually, if I had five Romacoy's jackets, I've had at least four. Um, yeah, I think it might be five now. Anyway, uh, 
Rainbow Country, also fantastic. Rainbow Country is actually made in the same place that Freewheelers is, okay? And I do have uh, that bright kind of burgundy-ish red uh, jacket from Rainbow Country. That is um, a fantastic jacket, really, really well made, very unique leather, not to everybody's taste, but it's a very well made jacket, good pattern, all that stuff. Um, they're made in the same place as Freewheelers, uh, but usually with less elaborate detailing and not the same leathers, even though they do often use the same tannery. That's We'll get that out in the material section. Um, but yeah, the, I think one of the things people think is like, oh yeah, Japanese leather jackets, they're all Japanese, so they must be made. Uh, people kind of seem to think they're made in the same place. That's not true. Remember, McCoy's jackets are made down, I believe, around like uh, in southern Japan, more or less, and then the Freewheelers and Rainbow Country jackets are made sort of, if I'm not mistaken, sort of west of Tokyo, but around that area, more so, like, not as far southwest. They're a little bit further up, okay, different area. So, but yeah, do I think Freewheelers is overrated? No, I don't think so. Uh, do I think some people overrate them? Yes, but some people still underrate them, so I would, and some people properly rate them. So. I would say Freewheelers is still properly rated. I think they make the best leather jackets in the world overall. That's my opinion, um, based off a lot of experience. Materials are incredible. So, in terms of materials, uh, well, actually, I'm gonna get to that in a second. Uh, still, in terms of construction quality, yes, in Japan, a lot of Japanese jackets will be made with really, really high dense stitch counts, high SPI stitches per inch, uh, like this one. Really well joined seams, really good job with the leather cutting and you know all the seam joining, all that stuff. A lot of nice French seams in a lot of cases. And really, really well thought out stuff. Really, really well executed. Very, very clean and neat looking. Um, with that said, not Freewheelers and Rainbow Country, because they're in the same place, they have the best quality for this stuff, um, for the stitch quality and all of that. The rest of the Japanese leather jackets are not on this same level. I've owned and handled enough Real McCoy jackets to say, and I have another one right now. I have the same amount of Freewheeler jackets as I have Real McCoy jackets right now. And the Freewheeler jackets in general are better made. Um, this is the worst Freewheeler's jacket I have in terms of overall stitch quality. It's my favorite, so it tells you that you don't, not everything is based off of stitch quality. Even for me, who loves to look at stitch quality. Um, and this is still better than the best McCoy's jacket I've had. Um, the, the, the mistakes are very minor, whereas on McCoy there's always something a little bit more off than that. Um, now, I'm not saying that's universally true. I'm sure you could find a McCoy's jacket better sewn than a Freebillers jacket. But anyway, and McCoy's is still very good. They're better than most. Um, and then uh, Rainbow Country is fantastic. In fact, I actually say my Rainbow Country that I have right now is the best sewn out of the Japanese leather jacket. Actually, it's the best sewn jacket I have right now. So, yeah, there's other Japanese leather jacket makers that aren't, don't do as good of a job. I mean, I had a Japanese leather jacket from uh, Mushman's. That wasn't made by Mushman's. It was sold through Mushman's. I don't know 100% which the studio was that put it together. But it wasn't that well sewn. I mean, it was fine, but, like, it's not what you would think of when you think of Japanese leather jackets. It's more like a higher end made in USA or made in uh, Scotland jacket, I guess is what I would say, okay? Or England or whatever. It's not, wasn't exceptional and there's a lot of other makers around the world that could beat that jacket that I had, all right? So it's not a universal truth that J made in Japan will give you the best stitching quality and the best, you know, leather cutting and all of that. A lot of newer Japanese leather jacket makers that aren't those top three that I just mentioned won't always do as good a job. Tension Works, I think, does a really good job, too. Um, but, like, I, I love the flathead. I've seen broken stitches on a bunch of flathead jackets. Like, it's not, I see it, I've seen it at least three or four times. Not uncommon, their stitching is not as good as, like, Free Willows, McCoy's, and uh, Rainbow Country. Um, and I, there's a lot of newer brands that I'm not going to mention because I really don't like them. And so if I'm not mentioning them, that probably means I don't think they're very good and you probably shouldn't buy them. All these newer brands that you're hearing hype about, if it's made in Japan, I'm not going to mention their names. But if it's not Freewheelers, The Real McCoy, Slash Toys McCoy, um, Buzz Rixons is fine too because they don't charge actually that much. Um, and Rainbow Country that's, those are, intention works. Those are kind of the ones that I would recommend after that. I'd mostly stay away. Um, so yeah, they're, 
their construction quality will be pretty good, but it's probably not going to be that good, right? Second thing, uh, another thing actually on the, in this vein, as much as I love freewheelers, they no longer, in my opinion, have the cleanest stitching in the world, okay? That actually now, in my opinion, goes to field leathers. I've seen enough pictures and enough postings and stuff about what he does and how perfect his stitching is that probably overall he's either at freewheelers level right now and that means he'll pass them soon or he's already passed them in terms of overall stitching cleanliness. So yeah, I've had one freewheeler jacket that was like completely perfect, but his stuff looks even more laser straight. And he's, you know, one man guy, I think basically a one man shop. I think he's got other people, but I think he's the only one that makes the jackets right now up in Scotland. If you want just stitch peeping perfectness, then Feel Leathers is actually your guy. It's not, it's not Japan anymore. So just so you know, if that's what you're going for, and you know, I'm not going for that. I, I really want a Feel Leathers jacket. I feel like this, the patterns still pull awkwardly, like up here where the, the shoulder meets the, like the, you know, the, the body meets and the shoulder into the sleeve. If he gets, once that, if I see that fixed, then I'll definitely go for a, free, uh, a field leather jacket. That's the only reason I don't have one right now. That's my opinion. I've had seen other people, people talk about that. You know, I still think his jackets are great. Um, and I think his, again, his quality is ridiculous. So like, if you want quality, he's the best. Okay, next thing is materials. Um, a lot of people, again, think Japanese horse side, oh, it's the best thing ever, blah, blah, blah. And again, am I guilty of feeding into that? Yes, okay, yes, I am. Um, do I still think Shinky makes the best horse hide in the world overall? Yeah, I do. I mean, sorry people on Fedora Lounge, I still think that. Um, and that's why I don't really post there anymore, as my opinions don't feel as welcome anymore. By some people. Um, anyway, I like Shinky the most. Um, but that doesn't mean it's like objectively perfect and the best. The other thing is, not all Shinky is the same. There's lots of different shinky. Uh, for example, freewheelers, I like their shinky overall probably the best. Either theirs or the stuff that Dave Himmel gets. Those are probably my two favorite short sources of shinky. Um, freewheelers, they finished all the stuff themselves. So it's you're not just getting any shinky, you're getting their shinky. Uh, the flathead tends, they said they, you know, I've been to the flathead facilities. I've actually been there to their Stockbridge leather facility. I've talked to the CEO, the old, well, the old CEO, I guess. I think I've talked to the guys, probably the new CEO. Anyway, they say that they get a different cut of shinky too. It's like thicker and it's, it's different, right? Um, and then, you know, McCoy's, theirs is different. And then you get the stuff that like Himmel gets and, and uh, Field others get something different too. It's not all the same, all these other places that get shinky, it's not all the same stuff. So, and even the other brands. It's all different. Um, and there's, you know, I, I love freewheelers. I don't love every single freewheelers shinky that they, they come out with, right? I think some of their finishes, I don't like them as much. I like some a lot more than others. Uh, actually, in fact, the nicest shinky I've ever seen was on a Himmel jacket that I had. And that's not, like, he's not getting the first choice of shinky. So already, shinky doesn't just mean one thing. There's lots of different finishes. There's different types of shinky, et cetera, et cetera, right? In fact, my favorite leather of any jacket I've ever had is this deer skin that Freewheelers uses. It is Japanese. I've heard that it's shinky. I've also heard that it's not shinky. Honestly, I don't even care. This is really nice leather. Um, this is my favorite leather. It's really soft. It's still robust enough, and it's just comfortable and looks amazing. And it's aging really nicely, too. So, yeah. I, I, the Shinky already is a minefield, and some people love it, some people hate it, some people think it's overhyped. Is Shinky overhyped? Yeah, I mean, it's my favorite, but I will agree it's overhyped. The other thing is, a lot of Japanese leather jacket makers don't all use Shinky anymore, okay? Um, there's a lot of other really great leathers. In fact, my favorite leather besides this deerskin and Shinky horsehide is Battle Carlo. Uh, I think it's Minerva leather, or we know whatever. Actually, I don't know if they use the Minerva for the jackets. I think it depends on who you're talking about. Anyway, I'm not going to research every little tiny thing in this video. I'm sorry. Um, but Battle Lassie Carlo, cowhide, veg tan from Italy. That's my other favorite leather. And there are some Japanese makers that have used that stuff before. In fact, I had one. That's the one I got from um, uh, Mushman's. But that's... I don't like every other horse hide that's out there. You might like some of the other stuff more than Shinky that some of the other brands from Japan are using. A lot of the other brands are using stuff that's like really super shiny. Um, I don't like that personally. Some of them are getting stuff from Italy. 
I don't like the way some of them try to specifically get different grain on some. I think that's weird and, and kind of dumb and over exaggerated in some cases. But there's a lot of other really great leathers that aren't Japanese horsehead and are not shinky. Um, so that's another thing is like the, a lot of there's misunderstanding that like Japanese leather is all the same. Not true. Some people think shinky is all equal. To no, also not true. Some people seem to think that all j horse hide from Japan is, is vegetable tan. Also not true, okay? The stuff that Ironheart uses in their jackets, which actually looks pretty nice, I have to admit, is chrome tanned. So, you know, it's not all the same, okay? Um, and then in terms of materials, uh, I think Free Wheelers uses the nicest like lining materials and stuff like that. Uh, really nice. 100% cotton flannel liners. I think Flathead uses nice ones too. McCoy's, sometimes theirs is really nice, sometimes it's not as nice. Uh, the Cooper jacket that I had, I really didn't like the liner on that, it was whatever. Uh, but I also had a fully silk lined A2 from them that was really fantastic. So it, it depends. Some of the other brands that I've tried on from Japan, I think the liners are kind of garbage. They use some pretty cheap liners that are sort of like rayon s but not even as nice as rayon. Like, I, no, there's, there's, they're not all equal, okay? Again, it's a Free Wheelers and Rainbow Country near the top. Uh, old, like some Toys McCoy stuff is good. Um, and then it's a uh, McCoy's and then after that, I don't, I, I actually think Flathead does some nice liners too. But yeah, not all the materials are equal, okay? Uh, that's another thing people misunderstand quite a lot. And there's a lot of really good stuff out there that is not from Japan. Uh, Japan's not doesn't really do much with custom, so if you want something nice and customized um, and get more of a choice for liner, then you're going to have to go somewhere else. The United States, Canada, um, Greece, and uh, England slash Scotland, Great Britain basically. That, those are the places you're going to want to go. So yeah, uh, last thing, and this is the thing that, the pe that people I think underappreciate the most. There's a lot of misinformation with those first two, but I think this last one is the one where people seem to have the biggest misunderstanding. Um, and just, or not misunderstanding, but they just don't even care or notice about it, and that is the designs and patterns. So if you want, like, actually like, repro leather jackets, do I think Japan is still the best place to go for that? Yes, overall, I would say so. Um, if you want, like, repros that aren't just A2s, okay? Um, you could, I'd say Goodwear and Eastman, I, if I want like a repro A2 or a repro like a B6 or a B3, that kind of stuff, I'd probably go to them first. Um, so those two uh, would do a better job than Japan, I would say overall. I've had McCoy's A2s, I'd still go with the, those other two. Um, but I, ha I, know, I know I have a Japanese A2, but it's a red one that I bought to match my red white cloud boots, so that's why I have that one, okay. Um, anyway, uh, I would say that for repros, you want to go to Japan still, if you want like like a repro repro. But other than that, if you're not if you don't need a repro, which most of us don't, then you don't need to go to Japan. Okay, uh, that's not necessary. Um, in terms of patterns and designs, yes, I, do I still think Free Willers makes the overall nicest patterns in the world for leather jackets? Yeah, I do. I think so. Now, I haven't handled any Thetty jackets yet. A lot of people tell me Thetty makes like ridiculously good patterns. It's just amazing overall. I can't say that yet. Definitely Thetty's getting higher and higher on my radar. The only reason I don't have a Thetty yet is I just, the designs don't appeal to me enough yet. There is one that I'm actually thinking about. But apparently, like I've had a couple people who I do trust their opinions and have had free wheeler jackets say Thetty has even nicer stitching. Stitch count's lower on Thetty, but apparently it's better executed. So, and these are people I trust enough to say that maybe that is true. Um, but either way, I know Thetty's fantastic, and they're super underrated, and part of this video is to say, um, all those people buying these newer Japanese leather jacket brands would probably be better off buying custom Thetties. Just saying. Or field leather jackets. Or Himble jackets. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, I think Free Wheelers makes ridiculously good patterns. Uh, they don't fit everybody, and not all Free Wheelers jackets are going to fit the same people. I mean, I don't really fit into a Mulholland anymore, and I think the Mulholland fits fantastic. I think it fits most people really well. I think it's one of the best, I personally think it's one of the best leather jacket patterns ever made, but it doesn't fit me anymore. I've lost too much weight. It just doesn't, the way, like my chest to, I'm weirdly shaped, okay? I've got like a 42 inch chest, a 30.5, anywhere from like a 30.5 to like 31 inch weight, it depends. Something like that, but I have an over 10 inch drop. But then 
like my thighs and my rear are rather big. So I'm like a guy who's hourglass shaped almost. I don't know. So if I want a big drop like this jacket has, it needs to be short. Um, I also just like short jackets in general. Anyway, this jacket, I think fits fantastically. I love it. Fits really comfortably. It's a little bit snug, but I have to kind of do that with most of my jackets in order to get the length correct on the sleeves and the, you know, the, the body. But I do like how this fits. It's very comfortable. I can move around very easily. I can zip it up, no problem. People talk about Japanese leather jackets having really annoying zippers. Did you see how easy that was? I don't, I don't know, maybe some, I, the, the La Brea, yes. The La Brea has a weird zipper and I don't like it. Wasn't that bad though, but I don't love it. Um, but the rest of my free jackets I've had, honestly, I've had no problems with the zippers. They've been fine. So, yeah, this jacket fits great. Very comfortable, I can mess with my hair if I need to. You can see here, easy. It's not like lifting up like crazy. This is the most I need to, you know, move my hands up. And I honestly almost never need to zip it up anyway, but yeah, it fits really nice. It's a bit snug, but I actually prefer that with jackets. And it's fantastic. It looks great. That's the other thing. It flatters me. A thing people don't understand is just because a jacket technically fits doesn't mean it looks good on you, doesn't mean it's flattering on you, all right? Um, to me, I think Free Willage does the best job with that. I think Real McCoy's does a fantastic job as well. I'm trying to think. The weird thing about the zipper is that's on the other side. It's on the left side instead of the right side. But it, as you can see, it works perfectly fine every time. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know why people always say repro zippers are just garbage. I, I don't really think that's the case. Um, but it's a little bit wavy, so again, it's not, this jacket's not perfect. It's not perfect, but it's my favorite. So, this jacket is a great pattern. It's a good ratio, like with the shoulders, the chest, you know, the length and everything. It's supposed to lean forward, and I think it does in a nice and sort of flattering way, the way it's supposed to be. It looks fantastic. And all the free wheeler jackets I've had, I believe they make great patterns, um, even if not all of them fit me. I think McCoy's, real McCoy's, Toys McCoy, um, great patterns as well, um, depending on what fits you. Again, I think Rainbow Country does a pretty good job. I don't think they do as well. I think that's kind of where they slightly fall behind. Their jackets are really weirdly long, um, but otherwise they're good. After that, you're in a really, it tension works, I think their jackets look really nice on most people. After that, I think a lot of, ja most of the Japanese leather jacket makers have Terrible, terrible patterns. I've seen plenty that don't look good on Western people, and they also don't look good on the Japanese people modeling them. Um, overall, I'd say Japan does a really poor job with leather jacket patterns. I'd actually say the U.S., like, even cheaper, like, Vanson does actually really good patterns. Um, I'd say uh, Johnson Leathers actually does really good patterns. And um, Lost Worlds, they're a little bit kind of big in the arms, but they are better than a decent amount of the worst Japanese leather jackets in terms of like the patterns. Um, so just because it actually fits doesn't mean it looks good. Doesn't mean it looks good on you. Doesn't mean it flatters you. And you want a leather jacket that actually fits well and flatters you. Uh, that's why I've had to sell so many as if my body's changed or as I've come to realize certain things or I got the wrong size, all this kind of stuff. You know, that's why this is my oldest, this is the leather jacket that I own the longest now and I've owned it for just over as of the filming of this video, just over a year, okay? Because I just had to do that. That's, uh, you know, like I said, I lost a ton of weight. My body's changing. It doesn't, I can't, it needs to flatter me. It doesn't need to just technically fit. It needs to flatter me. And this one does. I, I think all the other jackets I have do. But you need to be aware of that. I think Thetty, if you t in terms of like leather jacket makers that do a better job than most Japanese jackets in terms of patterns that flatter people, Vanson, even though their website pictures, don't look at Vanson's website pictures. They look like garbage and everybody's wearing a jacket four sizes too big. Why they do that, I don't know. But here's a picture right here of me wearing my Vanson. Here's a few of them. It's an older one from like the 90s, I think, but it looks great, okay? And I got it used and I don't even know if it's technically the right size, but it's a really good pattern, okay? Um, my old 60s cow, that jacket looks better on me than most other than most of the Japanese jackets I've tried on. Uh, the This one obviously fits me fantastically. If I have pics of the new 
uh, McCoy's jacket that I've got. That one fits me really great too. Um, but there's a lot of really great other makers that do really good patterns. Himmel Brothers. Um, Himmel Brothers makes some of the best patterns, I think. I still believe that. Also very customizable, but it's like his base patterns are fantastic. He's really good at adjusting them and everything. That, if you need like a custom jacket for like the perfect fit, I'd say either him or Thetty, depending on which one's designs you like more. Himmel's more like old school. I think that he's a little more fashion forward. So depending on what you like. Thetty, again, that's another one. I can't remember a custom Thetty jacket that didn't look really good on the person that was wearing it. Um, and custom jackets, people get the measurements wrong all the time and they make them too big often, but they still look good. I mean, Thetty's really good at patterns. So that's another maker I'd really, really suggest. Um, uh, like Van Vanson is another one. Johnson Leathers, I actually think I've seen them do some custom jackets that look, excuse me, really, really good on a lot of people. I think Johnson Leathers is another one that I think I've seen them do really good jobs for people too. So, and I'm sure there's some others that I'm missing out on, but some of these newer Japanese leather jackets have really bad patterns, like seriously terrible. When I say the patterns, it's not just like, oh, what's the chest measurement? What's the waist measurement? What's the shoulder measurement? There's a lot of like little intricacies. It's the whole shape. It's, it's the pattern is the whole shape of the panels and how they all fit together and how it's designed. Like, how does this taper? You know, all the, the little micro amounts of difference between different heights. Okay, that's the whole pattern. It's not just the chest, the waist, all that kind of stuff in the opening. That's not all a pattern is. There's more to it than that. And some makers do better than others. I, I believe Free Rulers does some of the best. I believe Thetty does some of the best. And I believe Himmel does some of the best as well. Those are my favorites, personally. Um, and aside from McCoy's and Free Wheelers, kind of rainbow country they're not the best either to be honest as much as i like them i like the jacket i have um they're not the best at that either and i'd say tension works other than that ugh, i wouldn't go and even flathead i love the flathead i've been to the I, i'm a big fanboy of the flathead i've been to their facilities got a whole tour and everything and i'd still say eh, i mean there's some people that are really flattered by their jacket patterns but otherwise i would probably stay away so I think you can probably tell, actually, that the answer is yes. Right now, Japanese leather jackets are overhyped. They're not as good as a lot of people are saying they are. Please don't just see Japanese leather jacket and go buy it just because you think that makes it going to be the best, okay? A lot of other really great makers that I've just mentioned um, that I think you should take a look at as well, okay? So it, not all Japanese leather jackets are the same. Not all Japanese leather is the same. Not even all Shinki is the same, okay? Um, not even all freewheelers jackets are the same, okay? I've seen better freewheeler, made freewheelers jackets than others, and I think there's some patterns that suit a larger amount of people from them than others. You gotta make it, it's more subjective than you think, okay? Um, and that's, you know, coming from me, I still say that freewheelers is my favorite, and I think they make the best leather jackets overall, for especially for stock jackets, but that's my opinion based on a lot of evidence and a lot of experience, but that's one guy's opinion, but I do think people need to, Calm down, Japanese leather jackets. Also, vintage is cooler. It just is, all right? I'm sorry, it is. I've, I've known that for a while, even before I got a vintage piece. Now I have a vintage piece, and now I know it's cooler, okay? It definitely is. But that's in a whole other minefield. <laughs> I'm not ready to go into that right now. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope this is helpful, and uh, I will see you all next time.